Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be connecting with you today. It is April 11, 2016. Today is a Tuesday. And we are very rapidly moving through this month of April. Today is also day six in the Opening the Heart and Soul series. And this series has been dedicated to all of the different ways that uh, that we close our heart and we close our soul to our own health and well-being, to our own blessed relationships, to love of self, love of others, and more. <clears throat> Opening the heart and soul is uh, it's not a one-step process. It is a lifetime uh, process. And when one has a fully opened heart and soul, they are, in essence, fully enlightened. Uh, that would be a being that has reached enlightenment, such as our beloved Jesus or beloved Buddha, many other uh, very high-level beings, known and unknown, have reached those layers. They did it by having an open heart and soul. And so this whole series has been on defining the various and many different ways in which the heart and soul uh, could be closed and what we can do to maintain an open heart and soul. So there is always opportunity for additional growth and additional opening. The highest level teachers will tell you that they always are striving to open their heart and soul more. <clears throat> so it is something that as a, an aspirant on the spiritual journey, which all of us are, if you're watching this, then you are also an aspirant on the spiritual journey, then we are all in this uh, path, so to speak, so that we can find your way back home with the least suffering and the greatest joy. And a big aspect of accomplishing that is maintaining an open heart and soul. And so uh, the last week, uh, prior to even this week, we started with a baseline teaching of what is the soul, how everyone and everything has a soul, and even the insides of our vessel, the insides of our physical body, have interconnectivity of the divine in it, therefore everything has a soul, and how we can communicate with the soul of our heart, the soul of our uh, relationships, etc. And that was where we started out this conversation. And if you missed all of last week, then I highly recommend you go back to the pre-recorded podcasts or the uh, just flow through my uh, my web Facebook page here and you can go back through and see them alternatively above this video is a link for all the video archives and just go back about a week or so and you can see day one day two I mark them exactly that day one day two day three day four <clears throat> each one has value on the second day uh, I believe we did let me think for a moment um, inner beauty outer beauty and that was actually very valuable. My teacher, Master Shah, had spoken uh, literally on this subject in his Soul Healing Miracles book. And inner beauty and outer beauty carries with it uh, a, a great deal of characteristics, uh, not limited to what we might think of inner beauty. And that could include uh, soul beauty, heart beauty, and mind beauty. What is the difference? What is mind beauty, for example? Mind beauty is having... Um, uh, a mindset of compassion. Mind beauty is having uh, thoughts of altruism and oneness. And so there's different levels of inner beauty. And so that was discussed on the second day. Uh, on the third day, we went into some, what are some of the negative patterns or negative thoughts? And then on the next day we covered um, circulating, circ circulating patterns and, and the patterns that continue to repeat in our life. They might not be deemed immediately as negative, but they are repeat patterns and they have a tendency to keep our heart closed or disallow us from opening. No different than negative patterns. And then uh, coming into this week, we focused, uh, we started to expand into a different area. Yesterday, I focused specifically on releasing relationship pain. And today I'm going to be focusing on maintaining healthy relationships, maintaining the highest value that we have in our current relationships, how we can continue to sustain and maintain those. And uh, so I apologize if there's a little extra sound in the background. I'm in a room with air conditioning. Just have to work with it for now. <coughs> so 
Um, I want to uh, pause and acknowledge all those that are coming in at this time. Uh, Facebook's gathering people a little slow today. So welcome Petra Marie and also thank you uh, for your referral to your other friend Petra in your village. Aloha Kristen, Aloha Susan, and welcome Rishab. Thank you for allowing me to share on your, uh, on your page. And welcome um, Sharon Dodd, Aloha Nirma, and Aloha Atina. So as we continue to gather, please uh, hit the share button, let other people know about this opportunity. Uh, you know, our world literally is relationship. The entirety of humanity is one big relationship. Think about that. Seven billion people and we're all in a co-creative, co-collective relationship. Whether we like it, whether we want to believe it, doesn't really matter. It's where we're at. We think we're in a relationship on an individual basis with each other, but in fact, we're in a much larger co-creative relationship. The movement, the Love, Peace, Harmony movement, for example, is all about um, aligning to others. It is all about aligning one thought of love and peace and harmony on a continual basis to serve the entirety of humanity. And yet, we don't think of that as a relationship, but it is. If we can all agree on just one thing of love and peace and harmony, for example, the world would completely shift. The, the darkness, so to speak, that tends to pervade our world in all the different ways that it shows up, literally has but one agenda, to create separation, to create a belief that we are not one. And so when we look at maintaining health relationships, we want to look at it from this much larger perspective. Because if we can maintain a healthy relationship with ourself, then it's much easier to maintain a healthy relationship with all those around us. When we allow all those around us, and I do mean the word allow, when we allow all those around us to, um, to, to bring into our world imbalance that moves us away from the place that we'd like to be, then we have to be responsible for that as well. So that'll be a great opportunity in the wisdom that we're going to be sharing here today. <clears throat> so for those who just came in, please hit that share button. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. We'll start by placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. We drop our left hand in front of our heart center. Our right hand remains pointed up towards heaven. Very gentle, very relaxed. <clears throat> Close your eyes and let us connect. Dear all the beings of light, Mother Earth, Father Heaven, all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, dear the soul of angels, healing angels, archangels, masters and ascended masters, lamas, gurus, sifus, saints, and buddhas and bodhisattvas, we love you, honor you, respect you all. We invite you as appropriate, if you have the time, to please come to be with us today to bless this uh, practice, this wisdom, and this blessing. Bless us to gain higher understanding, higher wisdom, higher guidance. Bless us to remember and to put into action that which we learn each and every day so that we can bring and maintain optimal health and wellness. <clears throat> Please bless us to be able to sustain our existing healthy relationships in the highest and best way and to bring any of the relationships that we are not pleased with into a place of happiness. We ask for your blessings as appropriate. We invite all souls in all universes to turn on the source soul song of love, peace and harmony to chant with us to offer this song as we build our relationship with all souls and all humanity. Bless us to align to love, peace, and harmony. We ask this source soul song to also bless us today to open our hearts and souls even more. <clears throat> so for all those that are new listening or watching for the first time, this is a blessing. Please prepare to receive. For all of those <coughs> excuse me, that are familiar, please join and let us offer a blessing. Lula, Lula, Lee, 
I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Again. Lu la lu la li, lu la lu la la li, lu la lu la li lu la, lu la ha li lu la, lu la li lu la. Oh,爱我心而灵，我爱春然泪，往里红，耳目深伤，相爱平安和谐，相爱平安和谐。I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace. And harmony. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so, I'll welcome those uh, who have also just recently joined us. Welcome, Atina. Welcome, Zilki. Welcome, Leone. Aloha, Suki. Welcome, Renee. Welcome, Missy. And also welcome to Edna, welcome Judas, Alo Aloha Elizabeth, and welcome Ali, and Aloha Renee. Okay, so thank you everybody. If I haven't mentioned your name, please forgive me. And thank you also for hitting that share button, letting other people know about today. So, <coughs> this subject has been... Uh, this is day six. As you can see, it's not a small subject. To maintain an open heart and soul requires um, daily practice. It requires a, comp a, a comprehension of the nature of soul, the soul world, how we fit in the soul world, our relationship to ourself and to others at the soul level. And I'm very, very, very grateful to my teacher, Master Shah, for without, you know, the 20 books he's created, all of the incredible blessings and wisdom that he's placed in those books, and my lifetime of experience that heaven has brought to me so that I could be positioned to, to have this discussion and this sharing, this blessing and wisdom with you. Um, I'm very grateful to him, and I'm very grateful to heaven for all of the ups and downs and trials and errors, and, uh, you know, we, we all go through our hard times. But the good news is we tend to come out uh, wiser as a result. And so I will be sharing with you uh, part, partly what I have learned, but mostly what Master Shah shares on how we can maintain optimal health and wellness in all of our relationships. Now for those that came in a little bit late, one of the things I touched on was <clears throat> that we are interconnected. 
as a human society. Literally, uh, there is no separation. You've heard it said that we are all one, but it's like, it's like you know, uh, it's like something hits your forehead and then drops to the ground. It, it does not go in the front door. The we are all one part is, is very, very relational to our comprehension about how to help, how to have and maintain healthy relationships. Seven billion of us, it would take approximately uh, one-tenth of us, one-tenth. If one-tenth of us could be on the same page, thinking love and peace and harmony in this example, the whole world would be in love, peace and harmony. It's, it's kind of like the hundredth monkey theory. Um, in other words, collective consciousness absolutely collectively impacts the whole. And it's the same with our relationships. It's the same with our relationship with money. It's the same with our relationship with the coworkers. And it's the same with our relationship with our self. When we, um, when we are not paying attention to our consciousness, to the way we bring ourselves to the table, uh, and when I say that, I literally mean to ourselves. How do we bring ourselves to the table about ourselves? Are we insufficient? Do we put ourselves down? Uh, do we look to others for, for love and approval? D have, we, have, we force, um, have we literally given up our power to others? Um, are we always in a place of looking for and needing love and, and failing and refusing, in essence, to acknowledge that love is and has always been there by our Creator inside us, not outside us? All of these are relationship based. This is a relationship with our original creator, our original uh, source where we come from. And every soul has that same kind of relationship. So if you thought of your mother, think of your mother, think of your father. If you have brothers and sisters, think of them. Brother one, brother two, brother three, sister one, sister two, sister three, think of them. Think of children if you have them. Think of child A, child B, C, D. Think of them. These are the ones that when we say have a relationship, these are the ones that we think we have relationships with. And then we expand it. That's our inner relationships. And we have our, our lovers, boyfriends, girlfriends. Um, we have um, co-workers. We have people that we hang out with. Uh, the softball team, the, you know, the, the flower making group, whatever it might be. <clears throat> these are also considered relationships. But guess what? Each one of those souls, each one of them, has a similar set of relationship problems. They may have problems with love for self. They may have problems with their mother or father or their brother or sister or their lover or their coworker or their you know groups that they belong to. Each one of them could have a very similar series of relationship difficulties with themselves, separation from God, separation from self, lack of self-worth, lack of self-value. And when we, when we start to look at that from this, um, almost like uh, one of my earlier teachers called it the dweller on the threshold. Uh, I, I read yesterday something from Osho, and he was saying, you know, the easiest way to, to move through life with the least stress is to simply um, be the person on the outside watching things go by, not being so attached in, in, in a part of it. So if you look for a moment at all of those, quote, people that, that we have relationship with, and you separate fully and entirely from the way you look at your relationship with them and just look at them as if you were the fly on the wall watching them, no equiv unequivocally, unequivocally, they have problems. They have, uh, they have uh, sexual things they haven't told you about. They have emotional problems they haven't told you about. They have mindset, attitudes, and beliefs they haven't told you about. They have self-love problems they haven't told you about. Everybody has the same stuff you and I have going on. So. When we look at how do we maintain high, highest and optimal health with others, it's very, very relevant, very, very important to recognize that everyone is a soul and every soul is a collective of their consciousness, that they all have problems no different than us, and that if we are doing good with them, 
then our souls are in alignment with them. If we have uh, problems in our relationship with them, then obviously there's a soul-to-soul -soul misalignment. But remember, they have a soul, you have a soul. How do we maintain optimal relationship health with all of the souls around us? It starts by not being so focused on me, 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 my problem, my this, I can't believe they did this to me. Da, 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 da. You can go on for two hours with the gossiping and all of that stuff when we blame it on other people. In order to bring ourselves into a place of healthy balance with every relationship that is currently in our life and, and all of our future relationships, which could be this boss leaves and a new boss comes in, it could be this coworker leaves and a new coworker comes in. It could mean that uh, you're in between spouses and you have a new one coming. It could be that the one that you're in could, could wane away uh, because that's what's meant to be, if that's what's meant to happen. You, that won't naturally happen unless it's meant to happen naturally. But these kinds of things naturally come and go when we maintain optimal, healthy relationship accountability. Uh, what do I mean by accountability? It means we see the bigger picture and our interconnectivity to the other souls. We don't go into the me, 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 my, my, my. We don't go into the I, I, I selfish aspects. We rise above that and start to see that we have the ability to serve every soul with this kind of awareness. Think about it. If you are the one that has risen above and you choose to stay in that place and you have a friend come to you and they're whining and they're going and down their, their victim road, <clears throat> but you have chosen to be the one that is uh, a little bit higher in their awareness, you can then teach them how to release the blockages as I have been teaching you. You can uh, teach them love, peace, and harmony. You can teach them forgiveness. You can be the one that uplifts them and brings them into a higher place of consciousness, thereby maintaining optimal health and wellness in your relationships. Do you think it's optimal if you are the one that people always come to and all you do is say, there, 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 it's okay, my friend, it'll all get better over time? That's not helping them in the long haul. You're, you're placating. And if they consistently come to you, then what does that make you? That makes you a person that is being dragged down by the energetics. <clears throat> now, if you like that role, okay, you know, that's, that's fine if you like being in that role. But if it's not truly helping them to rise above their conditions and move into a place of healing and love and peace and harmony, then you might want to look at, at what role you're playing in that position. As souls on a soul journey trying to find our way back home we must recognize that we have a responsibility to our soul to its journey and a recognition that we are collectively working together oneness and everything comes from one literally means that that means that in order for the full return to occur we have to assist each other the higher level beings that have come before us, they all come with the same message. Love thy neighbor and love thyself. So it starts with loving ourselves, not allowing ourselves to uh, put ourselves down, not allowing ourselves to accept detrimental co uh, comments to ourselves. I spoke about that in the past. Uh, uh, it was on, I believe, uh, I'll probably speak about it again tomorrow or the next day, depends. But um, we have to be conscious about negative self-talk because typically we do it to ourselves because there's no one around to do it for us, like our parents, our peers, our church, our, our, our so-called friends, etc. Um, and so if they're not around, then, then we do it to ourselves. <clears throat> this is patternistic stuff. And so we have to love ourselves first. Then we rise ourselves above <clears throat> so that we can be... <clears throat> excuse me fully available to serve others. Now, compassion is the key. In order to move ourselves into a place of compassion, we have to, of course, be compassionate to ourselves 
that means not poo-pooing on ourselves, not negative self-talking, not judging ourselves, not being critical of ourselves. That means being grateful that we did the best we could with whatever we did. Forgiving ourselves. That means uh, recognizing that you know, our beloved Creator loves us unconditionally in all times, never is not loving us in all time. <clears throat> but we have to acknowledge that and actually be in that place of recognition on a consistent basis. As we do that, we can do the same for others. So when that friend, that brother, that sister, uh, that child comes to us and they're on their uh, victim role, we can, we can offer them wisdom and teachings based on what you have done by lifting yourself up. If they come to you and, uh, uh, and, and they just want, um, want you to validate that they're, you know, they're the one that's, that's being abused or whatever, but they're not willing to move out of that role, they're not willing to make the necessary steps, then you need to be the one to teach them better. And so as we move down that road, we want to apply compassion. So the, the conversation is moving towards this understanding of compassion and how it needs to be brought into our relationships. I mentioned uh, in this first start of this teaching that every soul, all of those that we're in relationship with, has their own set of problems, <clears throat> many of which have not been shared with you because they need to maintain their role, whatever it is, their, their face, they need to hold their face. But they all still have similar problems in their own way. And so, if they communicate with us and we're in a relationship, if they communicate with us and we take it personally, we have a couple of choices. We can be the victim. We can be the one that feels that we're right and they're wrong. We can uh, expend time. Um, in a place that is not compassionate, uh, angry, um, judgmental, critical, or we can choose to be in a place of soul-to-soul -soul understanding and a place of compassion. Now the soul-to-soul -soul understanding is exactly that. If this soul is upset with me and I have a relationship uh, separation going on here, be it temporary or long-term, doesn't matter. We are both souls. We are both on the same journey. And especially since this is what I would call a relationship that I'm in, <clears throat> it would be very important for the bigger picture to make sure I fix this in this lifetime. Because if we don't resolve it, it's just going to keep following us. So there's really, from the higher soul perspective, we cannot uh, be, we cannot afford to be self-righteous. We cannot afford to be um, anything other than a higher conscious soul about it and bring compassion to the table. <clears throat> These souls that um, we have relationship uh, happiness with, those are ones that we have in this and another time worked out our blockages. That's why the relationship is happy. We've worked out our indifferences <clears throat> or we never had any, one of the two. There are some of you that can probably relate to a long-term, good, healthy relationship. Could be spouse, could be best friend, could be a brother or sister or even a parent, and then it goes south. And that's very, very painful because we have a lot of, um, a lot of connectivity with that long-term relationship. We have to bring a soul-to-soul -soul communication to it. We have to address it from these higher levels of compassion. Master Shah brings to us the wisdom <clears throat> that souls can communicate with each other. He brings to us the wisdom that at the level of soul, we can dissolve a lot of these, uh, these blockages because their soul and your soul wants the highest and best. The maintaining of healthy relationships is the same. Uh, at least 50% of us are married that are watching this right now. The rest of us are somewhere in between a uh, current relationship or no relationship. <clears throat> All of us have existing and ongoing relationships, good friends, brothers, sisters, parents. How do we maintain 
those relationships? How do we ensure that any future relationships that enter our life, a new boss, new coworker, new best friend, that those are not fraught, those are not um, thwarted with trouble? We do that by soul to soul communication. The same way that we maintain healthy relationships is the same way that we can fix the problems in it. <clears throat> it's kind of like preventative, uh, preventing sickness, preventing illness. Eastern medicine says, you know, do preventative actions, do Tai Chi, do Qigong, keep the Qi moving in your body, take herbs, um, you know, do things that empower your health and wellness so you can avoid getting sick. Very much the same wisdom can be applied in maintaining healthy relationships. Uh, some of you may have been married five years, 10 years, 12 years, and, and it could be a bit stagnant. It could be stagnant emotionally, which typically, le emotional stagnation, stagnation le usually leads to uh, sexual stagnation. And so this tends to be constant in people's relationships. Um, and so as we look, how can we resolve these from the level of soul? We want to apply soul to soul communication. All souls communicate at all times. Personalities, on the other hand, can create all kinds of problems. <clears throat> Might be a little loud in the uh, microphone because it's starting to rain on our roof and our roof is at this building I'm in. It's kind of a tin roof. So I apologize if it's hard to hear me. I'll try to speak up. Excuse me. Okay. So, soul to soul communication. Let's do, uh, uh, I'll give a, a quick example on maintaining healthy relationships with soul to soul communication. So, an example would be Dear the soul of my parents, my mother and my father, please come. Dear the soul of my brothers and my sisters, please come. Dear the soul of my children, please come. <clears throat> you could expand that if you'd like. And this could be a daily practice, a five-minute daily practice. Do the soul of my boss or bosses, my co-workers that I work directly with, please come. Do the soul of, of all of the, uh, my friends, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, please come. Uh, call whoever you want. When you say it, exactly how I've given you this example, Literally, their souls are there. How is that possible? Because in the soul world, the souls are not limited by time or space. <clears throat> when I do blessings, crown chakra blessings, healing and transmission systems, when I offer blessings, you know, I, I'm not anywhere near the person. They're, they're in a different time zone, and they're at least 2,000 miles away since I live in Hawaii, and yet the blessings uh, very often create instantaneous results. How is this possible? Because souls are not limited by time and space. And so when you call their soul, their soul comes. It's that simple. And when the souls come, their souls are not their personality. So how do you maintain a healthy relationship? You send love to the, to the souls. You do forgiveness with those souls. You offer those souls a blessing. It's actually very, very simple. It's preemptive. It's, it's very much like, um, you know, you go out jogging, you go out and do yoga, you go out and go swimming. Why? To feel good, to maintain better health. But when we have blockages with our relationships, they create stress. Stress, according to uh, Harvard, is representative of up to 90% of our physical health uh, and emotional health blockages are related to stress. Where does the majority of our stress originate from? Relationships. Think about it. It's our interaction. We must have interaction with others, otherwise we feel lonely, depressed, we shrivel up, maybe even take our own life. So we have to have interaction in this world that we live in. <clears throat> and so our relationships are the source of our joy and the source of our stress. So why wouldn't you want to be proactive in the bringing and maintaining of balance to your relationships each and every day by a simple five minute practice? You call forth all the souls. They are instantly there. You do a forgiveness practice with them. We're going to do this. 
Dear the soul of my mother and my father, my brothers and my sisters, my children. Dear the soul of all of my friends that I've invited and my coworkers that I've invited. I love you all. Really appreciate you all. Thank you for doing everything and in, in, in your lives to make my life better. I wish to ask for forgiveness. If I have thought negative things about you, spoken unpleasant things about you, or done any unpleasant actions towards you, not only in this lifetime, but in all lifetimes. I wish for us to maintain a harmonious, loving, supportive, uplifting, honoring relationships moving forward. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Simple forgiveness practice, okay? We offer them love. How do we do that? We do that with love, peace, and harmony. I've taught you many, many times before, we must bring higher frequencies into our physical world to adjust our problem blockage areas. It's a simple concept. I keep repeating it. I know you're going to get deeper layers of it. Love, peace, and harmony source soul song carries very high frequency. <clears throat> Love, peace, harmony source soul song has been transmitted by heaven to all souls in all universes. Every soul has it so that it can return back home. So that means the souls of your parents, spouses, children, co-workers, everybody has that. So when you chant it, it's automatic. Their souls are like, hey, I know that. This resonates with me. This feels very good, very beautiful, very healing and balancing. You simply connect with them, all these souls. Please chant love, peace, and harmony with me as I prepare my day. And you just chant with them three, four, five minutes. When you finish, you say respectfully return. Their souls return. You go to work, your boss is nicer to you, the co-workers bring you food, they offer you coffee, your, your brother that has been arguing with you all week, he's kind and nice, <clears throat> your kids, they're not fighting with each other, your spouse comes home, maybe you have a little whoop de doop de doop that night. All of these things start to come back into balance for the very simple effect <clears throat> of being preemptive with your love and your forgiveness soul to soul. So it's actually a very practical way to maintain optimal healthy relationships. <coughs> Excuse me. I apologize about the whole throat thing. I haven't had that in a while, but you know, purification is what we call it. It's when the old stuff leaves so that more light can come in. So thank you for the purification. So welcome to Jessica and welcome all the other new folks that have joined us. If you came in late, highly recommend you watch from the beginning. Lots of wisdom building up to this point. So now we're going to do some practices and I'm going to um, offer you a blessing. <clears throat> now, as I was just indicating, it's always valuable to bring higher level frequencies to the table. The more higher level frequencies we bring, the better the potential results. So chanting love, peace, and harmony is an example of that. Master Shah has brought the soul power, this soul wisdom. But he understood that <coughs> simply um, knowing is not going to necessarily always assist us. That he needs to leave humanity with higher level um, blessings. And so in his about 15 of his 20 books, he has transmitted uh, power into the books in the form of jindans, uh, which, which means golden light ball. Uh, and so jindans are, are something that um, great masters that live in the mountains, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll sit there for 60 years and uh, meditate and bring light into their bodies and they'll form a golden light ball in their body. They call it a jindan. This master, Master Shah, has the ability to literally transmit those into books and then we can receive them personally. He went actually, I'll tell you this short story so you understand the value of a jindan. Uh, he went, he, Master Shah, he's, he, he grew up in China so he studied Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, all those different things. Um, and he's been working with jindans for 20 years now. He's been receiving them directly from heaven. So his, his, if you have a third eye, he's, he's one big jindan, he's one big light body. <clears throat> but he went to, uh, to China to, to go see the most renowned Taoist master. 
And um, just as he predicted, you know, he, he knew that masters don't always just, oh yeah, I'll see you. He, he went and he asked and, and he was told, you know, come back tomorrow. He came back the next day, he was told, come back tomorrow. This is how they do it, the ancient, ancient way. So he was running out of time, so he said, you know, dear heaven, um, could, you, could you please send whoever's appropriate to this master um, and have him make time for me tomorrow because I'm running out of time. And so, um, you know, heaven sent some messengers, this master, sure enough, next day he accepted him. And so he went in, they sat down across from each other, and he's looking at this master's jin don with his third eye, this master's looking at him with his third eye, and this master's also receiving messages. And um, these, these great masters, they never share anything. These, these ones from China, they never share anything. There was a student of his, this, this uh, woman, a nun, and she had been following him, he found out, about 20 years. And that master across from him shared information that, that, that they found out, the lady was like, they talked to him after the information was heard, she said, I can't believe he shared that with you. I've been asking him that for 20 years, he hasn't shared anything. The only reason I heard it is because I was allowed to be in the same room at this time. So think about that. This lady hadn't heard it for 20 years, he shared it instantly with Master Shah. Why? Because with his third eye, with his own uh, connection to heaven, he could see that Master Shah's light ball was as big as his body. Master Shah could see that this man's light ball, after studying, he was 80 years old, after doing these practices his whole life, his light ball was about the size of his fist. About one and a half times, he said, about the size of his fist. And he was asking the Master, what is the traditional Taoist traditions for growing a jindan? What can you share with me? And the Master shared it with him, but he said, he told him, Master Shah, you don't need this. You're, you, you're, you're working with heaven's jindans. I don't know what exactly you're doing, but <laughs> you don't need what I'm doing. And that was the gist of the conversation. He shared that with us. So when I tell you that jindans are extremely special, I am not kidding. This is something beyond our, uh, our comprehension without truly studying uh, the Eastern philosophies and realizing just how rare it is to receive a jindan. And so, um, when I do the healing and transmission systems, you're literally receiving a jindan, new heart, new kidneys, new, new whatever. That is a light ball. That's the size of, a, of your fist. Uh, it would take the average aspirant a whole lifetime to make something that powerful. And so, anytime you can receive a jindan, it's a huge blessing. And so, I am going to uh, bless you with one of these complimentary from Master Shah's book called Divine Transformation. And he's such a benevolent soul, he understood that humanity would not be able to transform their blockages, be it relationship blockages or whatever the blockages are, <coughs> uh, unless they had these higher frequencies uh, transmitted to their bodies. And so, you, uh, if you wish to receive this, then you want to announce to heaven at this time, I'd like to receive this. If it's not something you want to receive, just simply say, uh, I'm not uh, ready or willing to receive it at this time. You can always receive it later if you'd like. You can come back to the video or go get the book on your own. Okay? So, um, prepare to receive. Sit up straight. Pull your back away from the back of the chair. Put your feet flat on the floor. On the floor. Relax your palms one over the other on your lower abdomen. I'm going to offer you a rainbow light ball and rainbow liquid spring jindan uh, for compassion. And it's going to be a soul jindan, a mind jindan, a body jindan. So you're going to get three different ones. This is not small. This is a huge, huge, huge blessing. So if you want this, prepare to receive. Through the authorities given to me, divine order, divine rainbow light ball, divine rainbow liquid springs of divine compassion, soul transplant to all those watching, all those listening, per their request of receiving it or not receiving it, as appropriate, transmission, divine order. Divine Rainbow Light Ball and Divine Rainbow Liquid Springs of Divine Compassion Mind Transplant. Prepare. 
transmission. Third one, divine order, divine rainbow light bulb, divine rainbow liquid springs, a divine compassion body transplants. Transmission. Divine order, divine rainbow light bulb, divine rainbow liquid, liquid spring of divine compassion, soul mind body transplants, join as one. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, you. How, how, how you are all extremely, extremely blessed. So I bowed my head to my teacher for the opportunity to serve you in this way. So now you have all received something hopefully you understand the value of it the more you use it the greater the benefits it is not limited to this subject matter today you can use it for blessing others somebody comes to you one of the relationships that's important to you dear my rainbow light ball rainbow liquid spring of divine compassion light ball please turn on please offer a blessing to my friend at this time and then you would chant divine compassion five minutes ten minutes whatever they're going to feel a lot better because it radiates the divine's compassion my compassion your compassion our human based compassion has different frequencies different layers divine's compassion wow well there you know is very very high and so that's what you have received is a rainbow light ball which is higher than golden uh, so it's a very high frequency and you have received that as a part of your soul and your soul journey it is permanent how do you turn it on repeat after me dear my divine rainbow light ball the rainbow liquid spring transmission of divine compassion I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. Very grateful for receiving you. Can you please turn on? Can you please offer a blessing to my own soul and to my immediate relationships? And you can say including, go ahead and say that, including, dot, 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 list everyone that you want to include. I am very, very grateful. Thank you. <clears throat> we can also do a quick forgiveness. We did a practice, now we're going to do it for real. Dear all the souls that I have invited, I love you. Your relationship is very important to me. I wish to sincerely apologize if I have brought any form of suffering in our relationships in all time if I have spoken unpleasant things to you if I have ever thought anything unpleasant if I have ever done any actions that has been any form of harm or suffering to you I deeply and sincerely apologize I wish to maintain the highest and best relationships as possible with each of you and I ask for your forgiveness if I have done anything to harm you. I wish to offer you all my unconditional forgiveness if you have done anything in any lifetime, including this one, that has brought any form of harm or suffering to me. Let us bring love and peace and harmony into our relationships for all life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you say to them, I invite you to chant with me divine compassion. Now you've turned on this treasure, so now all you do is incorporate the other treasures, close your eyes and visualize the divine, your beloved creator's compassion radiating to all of you. It's a rainbow light, so you see rainbow lights surrounding all of you, blessing all of you. That's your creative visualization. So let us send these blessings to ourself, and to our relationships. Divine compassion, repeat. Divine compassion. Divine compassion. 
Divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion. Divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, blesses my relationships. Divine compassion, blesses my relationships. Divine compassion, blesses my relationships. Divine compassion 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 blesses my relationships. Rainbow light ball, rainbow liquid springs. Divine compassion blesses my relationships. Divine rainbow light ball, Divine rainbow liquid springs, golden light rainbow light ball, blesses my relationships. Divine rainbow light ball, divine rainbow liquid springs, divine compassion, blesses my relationships. Divine rainbow light ball, divine rainbow liquid springs, divine compassion blesses my relationships. Divine rainbow light ball, divine rainbow liquid springs, blesses my relationships, blesses my relationships. Divine relationships, 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 divine compassion. Divine compassion, 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 divine compassion. Blesses my relationships, divine compassion. Blesses my relationships, divine compassion. Blesses my relationships, divine compassion. Blesses my relationships. How, how, how? Thank you, thank you, thank you. A master Shah would teach three to five minutes, three to five times a day. Now, you can do this every morning. It is preemptive. It is an opportunity to ensure maintaining health, optimal uh, communication in your relationships. If you did every morning a, this simple practice of calling forth all those in your relationships, um, and you can do this while you're in bed. Dear my uh, divine compassion treasure that I received from, from Master Shah, because that's who this, that's 
who transmitted this to you. I love you. Can you please offer all my family members, all of those souls that I have relationship with uh, close to me, a blessing to help us maintain healthy, loving uh, relationships that are honoring each other. Then you do that quick forgiveness like what I taught you. And then you just chant, you know, divine compassion, a divine rainbow light ball, whatever you want. It's, it's all on the same vein. Uh, and you, of course, if you're lying down and you're, you know, in bed, do it silently. Um, but, you know, three to five minutes, then get up, shower, brush your teeth, whatever you want to do. You will discover that as you go through the day, it will be dramatically smoother. The kids will actually come to the table and eat. They won't fight over they want to cook. One of them might actually do the dishes. Um, things will happen in a timely manner. Uh, you might get a kiss on the cheek from the husband when he hasn't done that in years. You never know how to play itself out. You just gotta look for it. You gotta be very, very surprised about how things start becoming much, much more enjoyable uh, and reminiscent of a healthy relationship because you do something like this consistently, okay? So this is examples of how you can maintain optimal healthy relationships moving forward. You can apply this same wisdom to a, a relationship that has pain and struggling. It of course takes longer because the more pain and struggling in, in any given relationship, that means the higher the, the blockages, the karma blockages. In those cases, you might want to look at receiving divine services to, to bring a clearing of the blockages in a relationship. Now one side note, is that uh, you could be doing this and be doing this consistently and something that uh, you might find that one of the relationships goes a direction that you would not expect maybe you expect it to become more and more better or positive and it could go a different direction but if you're doing everything correct and right and that's what happens then don't stop what you're doing understand that it could be that the soul world says, okay, this person has cleaned up this spiritual debt. This person uh, that has entered their life is no longer meant to be there. Uh, that basically you have leveled up and you're ready for a healthier version of a relationship. That is a possibility, so be aware of that. Um, and that's what happens when you raise your frequency. You raise everybody else around you but sometimes some of those they just can't be in that higher light it's also sometimes why people judge and criticize uh, you if you start sharing things like this that are changing your life i've had students tell me you know i try to share this with others and they come up with some very unpleasant things to say and you just give them love and you give them compassion and you recognize that that they their heart is not open enough basically at that moment in time so you can uh, invite their soul to receive blessings of opening their heart and soul as you do your practices and potentially eventually their heart and soul will be more open and they'll come to you and say you know please forgive me for my judgments and criticisms I have much more awareness now and I realize the value and benefit of what this has done for you one of the reasons why people um, maybe say something unpleasant to us especially if it comes to our own spiritual journey and where we're at we we want to share because we see the value in it but if they respond unpleasantly again don't judge them and don't take it personally just recognize that their heart's not open to that wisdom at this time um, if they're proactive and they come to you with their judgment and their criticism most likely it's because they don't recognize you anymore. They became associated with you when you were at this frequency and they were at this frequency. And now you've elevated to a higher light and that light vibrates them in a way where they don't like it. And so they'll come and they'll, they'll offer judgmental thoughts and, and observations. And you just need to maintain your light and love and recognize that that's what's going on, okay? It's just that <laughs> they don't know who you are anymore because you become more light and more love. So we always have to, to keep in that place so that um, uh, they have an opportunity to come up if they choose, but we don't lose our growth, all right? So uh, reminder, yesterday was a crown chakra blessing to release relationship pain. Uh, do not miss that one. I'm offering it with uh, a very special open your heart and soul calligraphy. So the blessing is beyond extraordinary. It's only the normal honor fee of a crown chakra blessing. It could easily be double, um, but it's only 100. So if you'd like to take advantage of that, 
please uh, connect with me through Facebook Messenger, my, my website, asoulhealer.com. Thank you for all of those night owls that have come and joined us. Uh, thank you for everybody that's come today. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing, uh, including on the podcast. And uh, I will be back tomorrow, and we're going to do probably the final um, version. Maybe I'll go into Thursday with this Open the Heart and Soul series. Um, be aware, thank you, Kristen, that there is a very special workshop this weekend with a very advanced spiritual teacher, one that has been knowing this twice as long as me with, with my teacher, Master Shah, and it's called an Advanced Spiritual Workshop with Master Hamena. Kristen has posted that in the links, and it is um, something where uh, if you can connect with one other person, then two people would be allowed in. Um, basically, one person gets a guest pass. So the honor fee for the, week, the whole weekend it becomes very, very affordable. Um, also, be aware that um, you have to be approved because it is advanced spiritual teaching. So the, the information we'll be going into, um, we have to make sure that you're in a position where um, you're able to fully utilize that wisdom and, and not to be challenged by it, okay? So those links are listed here. And for all those uh, that listen on this later, it probably will have passed by the time this podcast comes up. So love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All the beings of light that have come respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody.